How's it going everybody? Today I want to talk about NVMe drives and whether or not they need a heatsink. This video is brought to you by my personal pocketbook, so if you'd like to help me out, like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page so I can make more videos like this one. So what I've got is a small collection of heatsinks that I'm going to test with a M.2 drive. It's a 2280. This is a pretty typical size. Anything that you buy today for the most part for consumer PC is going to be 2280. That just means 22 is 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters. 80 millimeters. That's the size of the drive. So I've got several of them here. But before we actually get into that, I want to talk about the anatomy of NVMe M.2 drives and the controversy or arguments online about whether or not it needs to be cooled. So I've removed the sticker from this drive. It's a WD Black SN750. And what you can see are basically those big components on there. One of them is the controller, one of them is the DRAM, and two of those are the actual NAND flash memory itself. Now there's no real debate about whether or not you should cool the controller. It's like any processor, it needs to be cooled. The debate comes around the NAND. Some people saying it should be cooled just like everything else and it'll help with longevity. And other people saying it shouldn't be cooled at all. But what I'd like to do is point to two specific articles, one of them from EEWeb, and it states, the higher the temperature that the NAND flash experiences, the greater the acceleration of charge detrapping mechanisms that could lead to random data bit failures. NAND endurance is also impacted since endurance has an inverse relationship to data retention, and the rate of wear out of NAND cells is affected by temperature at the time of programming and erasing NAND. They later conclude NAND is subject to two competing factors relative to temperature. At high temperature, programming and erasing of NAND cell is relatively less stressful to its structure, but data retention of a NAND cell suffers. At low temperatures, data retention of the NAND cell is enhanced, but the relative stress to the cell structure due to the program and erase operations increases. And in the other article from NI.com, they say much of the same things. But one of their diagrams I want to point to talks about this effect, this data retention effect, and how it stacks by an order of magnitude depending on the temperature. And I think that's a really important thing to remember. So keep that in mind, and we'll revisit that in the conclusion of this video. So the heat sinks I'm using today, three of them are aftermarket that I've bought. One of them came with the motherboard. So the first one is Elutang just some company. I got this off Amazon. It was $15. It came with this and it came with another one that was quite a bit bigger, but this one was just 16 grams. It's definitely the smallest. So this brand is Pelodi and it's a bit bigger. And this one has two sides. It's going to sandwich the drive in between the two pieces. The next largest one I have is just the one that came with my motherboard from Gigabyte and it weighs 30 grams. This is something that's very typical on motherboards, especially higher end ones. You'll find the heat sinks are included. And the last one I have is this chonker. This is from Sabrent. It's the Rocket NVMe heatsink. And this one weighs 99 grams, almost 100 grams. And it's way more than any of the others. I had some troubles actually installing this one. There are four screws that are to be screwed into the side, but they line up fine. But the problem is it leaves too much space between the thermal tape and the drive. So there was actually a gap between the thermal tape and the drive on the side that it really mattered, which was the side that was touching the largest part of this heat sink. So I actually had to use the elastic bands that came with the Elutang one to keep it on there, which was a bit disappointing for one. This one cost, by the way, $40 compared to I think the next most expensive was 15 and that came with two separate heat sinks, a big one and a small one. And I am, a, I am a bit disappointed. I didn't get one with a little tiny 20 millimeter fan on there. I had a friend message me recently and you pointed out that uh, one of them came with RGB, which is a disappointment, but even bigger disappointment. It came with light pollution and who doesn't need more light pollution in their computer? So the testing parameters, I basically made my own suite. Essentially, it would last about an hour of different things I would do. And just to get an idea of how well this would work in general day-to-day -day use, kind of, kind of. Anyways, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyways, the first thing I did was put this thing in my computer without the sticker on it, without a heat sink. I loaded up Windows, Steam, Discord. I installed some games, Adobe, etc. I basically set it up as if I was going to use it like my, my own drive from here on in. So each test was the same. I would turn on the computer. I would leave it for 10 minutes, take a temperature reading for the idle, do some light work, take a temperature reading, Play GTA 5 for 20 minutes, take a temperature reading, wait five minutes, copy a 33 gigabyte folder full of files onto the drive, take a temperature reading, wait another five minutes, do crystal disk marks, default NVMe settings with the eight gigabyte test. I repeat that three times with the temperature reading, of course, 
and then wait 10 minutes to take a final idle temp reading. So here on the graph, we have to the left is the idle temps, the no heat sink at 45, the Elutang at 42, the Pelodi at 39, the Gigabyte at 39, and Sabrent at 35. This was no surprise to me. It's what I expected. The heavier the drive, the better heat soak and the lower the temperatures would be. Next was some light work. This was a bit surprising to see that the temperatures didn't change at all. So light work, I was just checking emails. I was going on watching YouTube videos, just using my computer like I normally would, but I wasn't playing games and I wasn't using any Photoshop or video editing or anything like that. Next was playing GTA 5 for 20 minutes. So I basically just drove around doing regular normal GTA things, no missions or anything, but just driving around Los Santos. And this is where we finally see some stress onto the drive heating it up. So the no heat sink, we got 54 max, Elutang 53, Pelodi 49, Gigabyte 51, and Sabrent 46. And now I have the averages. The averages were very close to the max. They were all within two or three degrees. But what I've found from these testings is that the temperature doesn't go too wild. Not until we do some actual testing with crystal disc mark, but they mostly just stayed relatively close to that max. They just kind of went up and just kind of wavered a little bit. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm more thinking about what the maxes were and that's kind of generally was in line with their, their averages anyways. So the next thing I did was copy some files over. Didn't take too long, but it definitely stressed the drive as well. We have no heat sink at 57, Elutang 54, Pelodi 47, Gigabyte 46, and Sabrent 47. So this is where we're starting to see the Sabrent show its weakness. And that's the fact that it's a big piece of metal, but it doesn't have a lot of surface area because that's the thing that's gonna let the heat escape. It's holding on to the heat, it's not really letting go. Next is Crystal Disk Marks tests. Now, before we talk about the temperatures, I wanna talk about the performance of the drive, depending on which heat sink I use. And for every th three tests for each heat sink or no heat sink, there was no discernible difference between the speeds. They, they go up and down just slightly, but we're talking less than 1%. Nothing that you would notice in real world and even, even not. So it's just like, it's barely a difference, not even worth mentioning. So, well, it's worth enough mentioning that I'm saying it doesn't really make a difference at all. So don't, don't worry about performance of the drive. At least in these more short bursts, it's not making a difference. So the temperature max, the no heat sink is at 64, Elutang at 59, Pelodi at 51, 51 for the gigabyte as well, and the Sabrent at 49. So these ones also, the averages were within two or three degrees. The only one that wasn't was no heat sink and that was six degrees difference. It's average was 58 with a max of 64. And last thing I did was wait 10 minutes and check the idle temp with the no heat sink at 45, Elutang 43, 40 for Pelodi, 39 for Gigabyte. And again, we're seeing that Sabrent holding onto that heat at 40 degrees, even though it's over three times bigger than the, the, the heat sink that's on the motherboard. It's, it's performing just as the same, basically. So it seems like that's might be a good heat sink if you're really never doing anything stressful for your computer, but I don't know, it just, it's a lot of money for, in this case, no real performance difference. All right, so looking at those results, it would seem, at least on the surface, pretty clearly that if you wanted a cooler drive, the best ones to get are gonna be the Plody having a heatsink already on the motherboard or you know something like the Sabrent. The Sabrent, it's expensive for $40, I think, compared to what else you can find. I think it's too expensive, but that doesn't matter. That's neither here nor there. The motherboard heatsink or the cheaper heatsink, like the Pelodi or the Elutang one, the, the, the spare one that it came with that's basically the same as the Pelodi, they seem like the winners, right? Well, here's the twist. There's something missing in my results. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's something I noticed very quickly when I was in the middle of the result, results, but I wanted to finish the testing anyways. And that's the fact that these temperature readings, where are they coming from? They're coming from the controller. They're not coming from the NAND. And most of these that you'll buy, they won't give you a NAND reading. Some of them will. So I found a website, I can't remember the fellow's name, but the, the website is Make Tech Easier. And they did some testing two years ago. And they had a Samsung NVMe drive that had the controller and the NAND temperature readings. And his readings are very telling. I come to a different conclusion than they did, but I'm gonna tell you why. So if you look at his temperature readings for, we're talking idle, we're talking idle. And I think idle is important because that's over the long term. Most of the time, your drive is going to be idle. The vast majority of the time, your drive isn't writing, it's not erasing. So that idle temperature is gonna be very important on the NAND. So let's take a look. When he has no heatsink versus using the motherboard heatsink, 
the motherboard heatsink not only heats up the controller, but also heats up the NAND. It makes it worse. And then when it's writing, the NAND is colder than having no heatsink. So it's literally doing the opposite of what you want to happen to that NAND. You want it to be warm when you're writing and erasing. And you want it to be cool when you're just idle and storing and not doing anything. So their conclusion about whether or not you should get a heatsink for your NVMe drive was that it was a resounding yes. While it is easy to install and forget about your NVMe SSD, these drives can and will overheat critically even during normal day-to-day -day use. In, in their case, that drive, it did get hot. The controller did get hot. But the point I need to drive home here, going back to those two articles, is that it's mostly the biggest deal here is especially if you're someone like like me, or most, most people who are just using your computer casually, if you're a gamer, you're not gonna be doing a ton of writing to your drive, right? So in, the mo in most cases, I think it's best to have the NAND as cool as possible. So all I can conclude from this is that don't use any of these don't use any of them, not, not, not like they were intended. Don't use them like that. What you need to do is actually cool the controller and not cool the NAND. So if, if that means getting some of those small little heat sinks and getting some thermal tape and putting those on there or removing some of that thermal tape from here and only have the thermal tape on top of say the controller, that would be better. So if I had any way to measure the NAND like they did over on Make Tech Easier, we would have found probably that this huge honker would have heated the NAND the most out of any of them, spreading that heat, keeping that heat from the controller and keeping it on those NAND and keeping that NAND warm while it's at idle. That's what we don't want. So what can I say? <laughs> I spent many, many days trying to figure this stuff out, learning about NAND and how it worked and doing this testing took a whole day, a whole Saturday. And it's kind of, it's a bummer that it was all for naught because what is it's it's this stuff technically is useful but also can be somewhat damaging to your components versus not using one at all which is very interesting so take that how you will personally i'm probably going to try to remove some of that thermal tape from the stock heat sink on my motherboard and just have it on the controller that's probably what i'm going to be doing and that's probably going to be fine for for most people's use cases even not using one it's not going to be detrimental even look at my results with no heat sink I never saw the thing go above 65 degrees. Couldn't even get it to go above 70. So that's the controller. The, the NAND isn't going to be as hot as that. It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. The, the biggest deal is the idle temperature. That's the stuff that's going to keep your data safe the cooler it is. So please let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you disagree or if I was wrong in anything. It happens. But anyways, this has been Tech Literate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching.